fight Time to see what life takes me So I roll the dice Look up to no one else But yeah, I was shy I got real power Hebrew is a lie they're not, they're not on the earth anymore. Right. Now, do you know why this happened? Let me take some five seconds. It's the book of limitations. Chapter five, verse seven. Our fathers have sinned. It says what? Our fathers have sinned. Read that again. Our fathers have sinned. So these people, more than likely, on this, these are just pictures, but you really actually had, you know, slaves. Well, those are our, those are our ancestors, right? And they sinned. They broke the most high's commandments. Read one. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquity. And what? And we have borne their iniquity. And guess what? We got to pay for what our forefathers did. That's right. That's what you call judgment and justice. All right. So that the reason why we went into slavery, we just read that in Deuteronomy 28, 68, because we disobeyed God. That makes sense? So what should we start doing? Uh, asking for forgiveness. And what else? I'm sorry. And what else? We should we need to start keeping his laws. Right. Yeah, start keeping the commandments. Right. Alright. Start keeping the commandments. So do you pray to the name of the Lord? That's good. Alright? You gotta make sure you keep praying to the name of the most high. You know, you say you was getting you learning more about it. Keep increasing your learning. Alright. Who who teach you? My friend. Your friend? Yeah. You know, keep learning. You know where we was at today. But he he be on Roosevelt on State though. He got, he be he on be, Roosevelt. That's the car. Right there by uh Drew. Jewish. Okay. Yeah, we know those brothers over there. So keep keep listening to them. All right, keep getting yourself built up. Keep keeping the commandments so you could be saved. Right. Because you know that we living in the end of the world. We're not living in the beginning of the world. Right. We're not living during the time of Esther. Right. All right. We're not living during the time of the Chronicles. We're living in the end of the world. That's right. And you want to make sure that you be saved out of it. You be uh second chapter eight, verse three. It's not it's, it's not gonna be a lot of people that make it. We can tell you that right now. A lot of people they're not gonna make it. Second chapter eight and verse number three. Bring it out. And read There be many created. But few shall be saved. Read that again. There be many created, but few shall be saved. So everybody's gonna make it. But few shall be saved. So the Lord said it's many people. The Lord created many people on earth. They said it's over seven million people on earth. Eight billion. But guess what? Out of that eight billion, only a few is gonna be saved. Huh? It can be more than that. But guess what? Only a small remnant will be saved. That's right. And the remnant to be saved is the men that escape by their faith and their works. Right. Look at that in Second Edges 9 and 7. Second Edges chapter 9, verse 7. That's Redo. the only way you're going to get out of here. It's by your faith and the works that you have shown to the most high through your faith. That's the only way you're going to get saved. That's right. If you don't have, you can have all the faith and no works, you're not going to make it. You can have all the works and no faith, you're still not going to make it. You have to have both. So read this. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 7. Bring it out. And every one that shall be saved. It says what? And, and every one that, that shall be saved. saved. And shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. By his what? By, by his, his works and, and by faith. The only way you're going to make it is by his works and by faith. That's it. Confess yourself. You say confess yourself? Yeah. What you mean by that? Don't like go to church. Brother, it don't say you don't have to go to church. What church are you gonna go to? Alright. You go to church. What church do you go to? I go to church. What church? I go to Salem. Huh? Salem. Salem? Yeah, it's one hundred and fourteen. What do they teach you there? About Jesus, about God. About Jesus? Yeah, and I got baptized. See that? None of that none of that nowhere in the Bible you gotta show me in the Bible where it says you have to go to church. Right. In church. You said what? So you don't have to go to church. 
just because you go to church, that don't mean you're going to be saved. Right. The church is actually a people before it's a place. Right. Let's go to Acts 7 and 38 and Acts chapter 7 and 48. And if we really want to be honest, you know, the most high, he might not even be in those churches. Right. Because the Lord don't dwell in temples made with hands. Right. As the scripture said. Right. Read this. The book of Acts chapter 7 and verse 38. Bring it out. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Read that again. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. What the Lord said. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Now, who was with Moses in the wilderness? You don't know? You read Exodus before? You know about the Israelites, they was, who freed the Israelites out of slavery? You don't know? Moses did. See, I'm, I'm still, I'm still Alright, well you want to take, you want to slow your road in. Right. Alright, you want to just slow down, slow your road, and get the milk. Alright? That's right. So, you gotta, you gotta get the foundation first. Before you know, you come out here and say, well, why are you not doing this? If somebody could confound you. All right. So Moses was with the Israelites in the wilderness. This is how we know that the Israelites is considered the church according to the Bible. Right. The church is a people before it's a place. Right. So the true church is the people on that side, the Black Hispanics and Native Americans. That's right. If you're not on there, you're not the church. All right. This is the church. Now Acts 7 to 48. Verse 48. How be it? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Read that again. How be it? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. You think the Most High could fit inside that temple? The St. Them Church? No. You think the Most High could fit in one of these buildings? No. Read on. Verse 49. Heaven, as says the prophet, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? Right, the Lord is He's in the heavens right now. In the earth, that's his footstool. Only thing that can get inside that building is the most high spirit. If he put it inside there. That's right. But nine times out of ten, we gotta examine the whole matter. We don't know if he's in there. Alright? So you don't have to go to church, brother. That cleared up the confusion. What? Yeah, confusion no. No, do that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you don't have to go to church. Right. Yeah, any, if anything, our people need to get out of the Christian church. That's right. Because right. what are you truly learning in there? Do they, do they tell you you can't smoke in there? You see that? So if they tell you you can't smoke but you're still going there, I mean, you got to put two together. What's going to get you right and really say this, really keeping these commandments. All right. But you also say before the beginning, you say be Christian in the love, in the love. You said what? You said, you said, I could be, be a Christian in the Israelite. We just, what does the word Christian mean? Right. You mean 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. See, being a Christian is not just going to church Bring and seeing that you're holy. Right. All right? That's not real. A real Christian is somebody who really followed Christ. All right? 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Bring it out. Be followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. It says what? Be ye followers of me, even as also I am of Christ. So Paul said, be a follower of me, even as I am also a follower of Christ. Right. So Paul would be considered a Christian. Alright? The disciples, they were called Christian first at Antioch. Alright? Let's get that in Acts. Chapter 11. Alright? Book of Acts. Acts 11 and 28. Wake up, Bob. Acts 11 and 28. And verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass as that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. It says what? And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The first people to be called Christians was the disciples. Right, right. Why? Because they were literally directly underneath Christ as the disciples before they were sent out as apostles. Right. That makes sense. So you can't, can you be a Christian and an Israelite at the same time? We just, we just, we, yeah, yeah. brother, all right, brother, just, it's safe. If you don't understand it, let us know so we can break it down. That's right, right, right. right. 
There's no wrong answers up here. We up here to guide you. We up here to feed you the milk. Shepherd, right. Give me First Peter chapter 22, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. All right, First Peter chapter 3, First Corinthians chapter 3 and 1. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. Bring it out. As newborn babes. As what? As, as newborn babes. babes. Read that again. As, as newborn babes. babes. You will be considered newborn babes. Right. And it's nothing wrong with that. Hey, I'm still a babe. Right. All right. We are still babes up here, man. So as newborn babes, read one. Desire the sincere milk of the word. It says what? Desire the sincere milk of the word. No strong meat. Desire the sincere milk of the word. Brother, you got to desire the sincere milk. Which is what? Learning more about your heritage. All right? Reading. Reading Genesis. Reading, read the law first. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers. You don't want to just come into this thing. You all the way in the book of Psalms of Solomon. You're going to be lost. All right? Man, what is it? What is it talking about? Suck the breast of my mom. Right? You're going to be bugged out, man. Right. You don't want to hop into you just, you're hopping all in the book of Romans. You want to desire the sincere milk of the word, which is the law. Read one. It reads that ye may grow thereby. If if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And so you want to grow by the what? The milk. That makes sense. What's the milk? The milk is the basics of the word. It's the fundamentals. Like what? The commandments. Knowing that you're an Israelite. Hey, maybe even some of the feast days. That's what you call the milk. Alright? The basics of the word. Hebrews 5 and 12. Book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 12. And it reads, For when, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God, and are but and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. And what? And, and not, not of strong meat. meat. See that you need the milk and not a strong meat. Is that all making sense? Yeah. All right. So what did I just say? Huh? You said, uh, you said, uh, uh, something about love. Brother, look, listen, we got you. All right. Okay, here it goes, back there. All right, well, let me know so we could, you know, we want to make sure you understand this. So read that again. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, and verse 12. Get out. For when, for the time ye up to be teachers, Ye have need that one teach you again. So everybody has need that they be taught again. Regardless if you a teacher, if you have a teacher, everybody has to be taught. Right. Read on. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Right. These are the first principles before you just come out here. Read on. And are become such as have need of milk. And not of strong meat. And of what? And, and not, not of strong, strong meat. meat. You want to have milk and not of strong meat. Right. With milk again is the basics of the word. That's right. So you know what you need to do? Right? You need to. But we got a YouTube channel. Right? Where you finna go right now? You need to board, probably it's a Sabbath day, so it's not too much you can really do out here. Right. Now you can come out, you can stay it, you can stay out here more than you're more than welcome to stay out here and listen to the word. Right. But we got a YouTube channel. You want to make sure you get on that YouTube channel. Make sure you watch the, the YouTube videos. Make sure you follow along with your Bible. Right. Keep getting your faith built up. Right. Make sure you're working on yourself, keeping the commandments. Right. And everything is gonna be everything is gonna smooth blue uh flow smoothly from there. Right. That makes sense. So you got any questions? No questions at all. Yeah, what's this right up? Those are your table with That's beat right there. Alright. <laughs>
the meat you got you can only you got you got yogurt on the table you got milk and cheese maybe that's all you got you can't you, you, you ain't unlock the milk the meat yet all right And you got applesauce as well, right? <laughs> Spiritually <laughs> applesauce, right? Yogurt, maybe a danimal. All right. The protein. Yeah, get the protein. You yeah. want to get your protein first so you can start building that muscle. That's what we're gonna eat. Nah, we talking spiritual. Right. All right. Protein. It's all spiritual. Yeah. Cause we got an all you can eat buffet out here, which is yeah. the word. Right. This, this word, this Bible, this the food. All right, give me that Isaiah 55 and 1. The book of Isaiah. You got to make sure you eat. What happens if you don't eat physically? You're going to die. You need food to survive. So you need spiritual food to survive spiritually. I'm fine, though. You fast? Yeah. That's good. But you still need the word. Uh, you don't fast? You don't fast? We do fast. Right there. That's neither here nor there. All right, we can't just oh yeah, I fast this day, this day, this day. Right. You don't, you really, nobody really wants to know that you fast. Five six. Oh, that's good, that's good, brother. Give me uh, give me real fast. Give me Matthew six, sixteen. That's good that you fast, but right. you don't want to appear to men until fast. Right. Men shouldn't be knowing that you fast unless it's for edification. Uh huh. You know. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 16. Bring it out. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. Right. For this, I'm sorry, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Right. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anointing thine head and wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast that thou what that thou appear not unto men to fast it has to be your mentality that, that, that thou, thou appear not, not unto men to, to fast but unto thy father it says but unto who but, but unto thy father you don't want to appear unto men it's a fast right so really chiefly <laughs> men shouldn't be knowing that you fast unless you might go in a fast with somebody right, right. Because what men would do, chiefly the Pharisees and the hypocrites, they would walk around all sad, right? Oh, my stomach hurt, <laughs> right? Just to ask, oh, what's wrong? Yeah, I'm on a fast, right? right? That's off. Right. They got crust and stuff. They put crust and stuff on their eyes. Throw ashes on them. Right. You don't want to appear to man to fast. Right. All right. We just know, brother. We we you gotta fast. All right, we commanded to fast. You got the Day of Atonement. That's a mandatory fast. Right. So as long as you fast, then that's good. All right. Any more questions? No questions. All right, brother. What's three things that you learned up here today? What's three things that you learned up here today? Make sure you get some fringes. Huh? I mean, fringes. I mean, you can wear a garment, but you still gotta have the fringes on. Right. You don't have where your garment at. I don't got it. Well, that's why you wanna make sure you have a fringes. Right. Regardless if you don't got a garment or not, you still wanna make sure you have fringes. Right. On the borders of your garment. 
Make sense? Yeah, right. All right, brother. What's your name? Darius. Darius? Yeah. All right, talk tomorrow. All right, take care, brother. All right. All, all praise, praise to the both sides, man. All right. All right. All right. All praise to the both sides. Go well, with the brother, you know. Nice start on You know, start off with the animals. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The go grab. The kid cuisines. Yeah. All right, then work his way up through the spirit. Right, right. All right, then guess what? That brother might be Mike. Right. All right, out here shaking the hand, teaching the people, prophesying into the nations. All right, you never know, you know, who you could be talking to. All right, you never know, you know. Give me first Corinthians three one. You never know who you could be feeding back on the earth. That's right. That brother, that might be Nahum. All right, just waiting to transform. All right. First Corinthians 3 and 1. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Freak it out. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, right. but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Hamashiach. I have fed you with milk. I have what? I, I have, have fed, fed you with, with milk. milk. We have to give to our people. I, I have, have fed, fed you with milk. milk. Hey, what's that panther in your hands? Oh, that's from museum? Yeah. Okay. What's your nationality? Sorry? What's your nationality? African-American. African-American. You believe in the Bible? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Got an iffy relationship. What's, uh, what makes, if you don't mind me asking, like, what makes you kind of believe in the scriptures? Uh, something's true. Okay. Some, okay. All right, well, we, if you mind taking our pamphlet. Yeah, sure. We the Israelites, you know, we got chosen people. All we doing out here, we just telling our people their history. That slave, you'll be a, a victim of slavery, right? Yeah. So the reason why slavery happened is because we disobeyed our God. Right. Okay. And, th and due to our disobedience, God has punished us, seeing we are his chosen people and his children. And what we do have to do, we have to recognize who we are. We have to wake up out of this deep sleep. We have to come out of America's wickedness and repent before the end of the world comes, because you are living in the last days. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. You're Israelite. Uh, read that again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Bring it out. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Mashiach. I have fed you with milk and with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither ye, now are ye able. Yeah, so we got to feed our people with the milk, man. Our people need the milk. Without milk, our people wouldn't even be able to come alive and be quickened. Y'all got a minute for the Bible? Two minutes. All right? Because with this basic understanding, all right, this, this understanding can make one wise. Right, right. Give me uh, Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. All right, Psalms 19 instead of verse 7. Hey, sis, you got two minutes to learn your nationality. Two minutes. Life changing information. Two minutes. Sister. Life changing. You might never Life hear again. All praise the most high. You just made a decision that, that that's going to save you. Now, you know about the, have you ever heard about the Israelites? What you know about the Israelites? You talking? All right, so we basically come out here to teach our people. If you want to, if you are black, Hispanic, and Native American, you will be a part of God's chosen people. The reason why we living in the conditions we are living in today is because we are, we have disobeyed our God. We have broke God's commandments. How would you say we living as a people, as a nation? As, as so-called black people, how are we living? We living good, lavish, or we are we on the bottom? We still trying to get free, right? Right. This the only thing that can make you free. Because before you get free physically, you got to be free mentally first. We got mental shackles on our head, on our brain. That's what we trying to do with you. So would you consider yourself black? Yeah, I know. What are you mixed with?
Right. They were black. They were they were different black people. Yeah, what are you? Uh, According to your father. So because you are what your father is, because your father carries the seed. Oh, everything. What about your great grandfather? Italian, Polish, German, Indian. I got Cuban, On your father's side. Somali. I got Mexican. Well, so, okay, we we don't know because it's it's a lot due to and that's. And, and that's what a lot of our people. Exactly. Exactly. To sum it all up, because we don't, since we don't know exactly who you are, more than likely you will be an Israelite. Right. That sums it up. We don't know what tribe you're from, but you will be an Israelite. And the Israelite, they are God's chosen people. Have you ever read the Bible? You familiar with Moses? Moses freed the Israelites out of slavery. The same way we were slaves in ancient Egypt, we slaves here in America. Again, it's due to our disobedience and breaking God's laws. So the, the, the thing we have to do now is that we have to start keeping God's laws. If I was to ask you, why were you created on the earth, what would you say? What would you say? Honestly, I would say in my family, um, we're very mixed and diverse, but at the end of the day, love and respect each other and we just trying to help each other get to where we need to be so it's, to us in my family i can't really say it's about putting somebody above each other right. it's just about know where you came from and you know keep our family you know going respect people because we really do love each other everybody right. so it's okay it is that's cool. We are all one family, but everybody on the earth is not our family. That's true. I'm talking about my family. I can't okay. speak to nobody else. Right. But honestly, like, yeah, if you was looking at a crowd of people and you had different races, different groups, I would be in my own very, very own category because my family is just mixed, period. Okay. It just meant like that. That's how God wanted us to be mixed. You know what I'm saying? Not to divide anybody or, you know, put somebody above, but for me, I can't say that because I love and respect everybody. That's the way I am, you know? But we gonna ask that. We just ask five minutes, that's it. Five more minutes and then you good. I know you got somewhere to be. Numbers 118. Numbers chapter one and verse 18. Bring it out. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees. Right, your pedigree is your genealogy, your lineage. So although we do come in different shades and sizes and different colors, at the end of the day, your seed or who you are is determined solely by your paternal side. Right. We're going to show you why because your patern your father, he carries the seed. Right. So no matter where you plant, uh, if I plant an apple seed out here, it's going to be an apple tree, right? But if I plant that all the way in Asia, it's still going to be an apple tree. Right. So no matter where you plant the seed, the seed is always going to stand short. Hang on. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. By the what? By the house of their fathers. And again? By the house of their fathers. So you are your father. Now, do you believe that one race on the earth is better than another race? You're on the 76. Be real. Let's just be real. Your biological father. Yeah, that's what it's talking about. Because your the heavenly father, he doesn't have seed, he doesn't have sperm. It's talking about your biological father. Like you are who your biological father is. So let's say if your father would be Native American, hundred percent, when he has you and you're his offspring as his daughter. You are now by the far, although your mom might have a different side to her and things like that. That's true, but I also feel like it's a trick to it. It is important when it comes to the land, like, you know what you say, like royalty. Right. We don't even know who our real black royalty is. So that's important when it comes to that. But at the end of the day, the woman and the woman is important. So whoever decides to come through is trying to work with you and your family and your language, right? So it's kind of a trick question because it's like, it's important to people who it's meant to be for. But at the end of the day, there may be 
somebody who's coming out of somebody in your family, and your family tree, that's meant to be here, but couldn't be here or this way, so they need to come here. You know what I'm saying? Right. does matter race because like you said the, like the royal blood type the royal the, and that's who we are we're going to show how can you pick somebody up the crowd and know what they need to do what you need to tell them and what do they need to do you know it's, it's called discernment. It's important, but sometimes you're waking up. You're waking up demons. The demons, the demons, they know who we are. And we know who the demons are. Right. But the only way you're going to be free, this is your royalty. This is how the Israelites is a royal people. Right. They're a holy people. This is going to break through. You said. Who put these generational curses on us? God. Okay, God. That's right. So who's the only person that can take this off of us? God. God. The only way that we can take this off of us is by us coming back to who we are. Because before you know God, you first have to know who you are. And the God is only the God of Israel. Right. Only the God of Israelites. Although he created everybody, he has a special people. We're going to show you that. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people. Unto the Lord thy God. The Israelites, they are holy people to God. Read on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. It's like you, I'm pretty sure you got a, a favorite pair of shoes or a favorite pair of shirts. Yeah, you here. Or a color. Out of all of them colors, you like one color better than the rest. As, am I wrong for saying, guess what? Why do you like the color pink than the rest of the colors? I can't tell you that you're wrong for that. Same thing, we can't tell God that he's wrong because he has a special people. Right. Read on. Above all people. The what? Above all people. The Lord said. Above all people. Read on. The earth upon the face of the earth. So, according to the Bible, the people on this side, God created them genetically and spiritually better than every other race on the earth. That's right. That's why when you examine the things we do, we dominate everything. Right. We don't have recessive genes. Right. You have some? Okay. Uh, precept. Isaiah 40:17. Isaiah 40 and 17. Hey. Let's get it. So, that's who we are. That's this is who we are, and the proof is in the Bible. I know that. Who is that message? This is messages to the Israelites. But the way you know you are Israelite is by the curses of Deuteronomy. Right. Generate curses, generational curses. Yeah, you were talking about. Everybody is not under generational curses. Am I right? But I'm saying it's not about what you look like. It's about who you descend from. Because no, it's not. It's about who you descend from. Your nationality. Your ethnic background, because you, like you said, you got people that so-called black, or he might look light-skinned. Some people might think that he's white, but he's not. He's he's a. a you see what I'm saying? So it's about ethnicity. Right. So regardless, it's do it, it is commandment sister that we do have to keep, and this is why God. Regardless, this is why God put you on the earth to fear Him and keep His commandments. Right. She got, a, she got a question? Uh, What'd she say? So, um, she basically said, what about the white side of your bloodline? Is that dirty? The white side? <laughs> it depends on what side it is. It on the maternal or father side. Because you had a lot of slaves that were getting raped by their slave master. So, the, the seed was... Who tried to help us? <laughs> Bring it out! No, who? I'm asking. 
I'm listening. Bring it up. That's a two and fifty nine. And these were it's like and these were they which went up from Tel Mala and Tel Hasa, Sharab, Adan, and Emir, but they could not show their father's house right. and their seed whether they were of Israel. Because in the intro, you will have to know who your father is, just like in the scriptures. How do you know who your wife is? What do you mean? How do I know who my wife is? You're talking about fathers, and I understand like representing because the male is supposed to support, right? So how would you know who your wife is? If your wife was a white woman, how would you know if that was your wife? My wife wouldn't be a white woman. Right. Because I'm gonna, can I show you? Can I explain that to you? Because that's a good question. You can, but I mean, it's, it's, it's happening now. Of course, so but you can't say give me Deuteronomy 73. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying F them. I'm just saying the Lord, God is against interracial marriages to begin with. Right. Because the Lord told us not to deal with the women of the other nations because we're going to be serving other gods. That's the first commandment. Thou shalt not serve so like, any gods. Yeah, right. What do you mean? I, I'm not saying if they're a woman, that's okay. That's fine. In certain nations that you're not supposed to inter, be interracial mixed with. But for example, the, in a genealogy of Christ, it's a heathen woman in a genealogy of Christ. But Christ is still the Israelite because of his fathers, like King David, Adam. It shows his whole lineage. Okay, I just, like, can you just listen to the Sarah? Wait, what is it? Go ahead, on the mic. Hello? Hey, how you doing? That's what God said, though. Right. It's out of the Bible. If you think God was telling you right now, you think He'll say, "Oh, you not, you not, you not black? Fuck you, whatever." You know. Nobody's black. That's the whole point. Uh, black is a cut out of a crayon box, right. and so black is a derogatory black, tone. I, I can name darker skinned people that all y'all standing over here, but they might be that's Ethiopian. In every single race. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Skin color doesn't matter. That's why we was. But that's why we was trying to clarify. I think it's a misunderstanding in certain areas, which is cool because we're gonna clarify it. And just, it's not about your skin color at all. We're gonna show you out of the Bible. Read John seven twenty four. It's the book of John, chapter seven, verse twenty four. Judge not according to appearance. It says what? Judge not according to appearance. Yeah, you don't want to judge according to the appearance because you don't know who you're talking to. Right. For example, Lauren, Lauren London. All right. If anybody know who Lauren London is, what's her name? Uh, What's your name, Mark? Yeah, Nipsey Hussle. You gotta go. 
Well, guess what, sister, we out here for you. We out here for you. We want to clarify. We really want to get. We really want to get you saved. That's the whole point. No, we not. It, it's a. We want to talk about facts too. It's a difference. We not arguing at all. It's a difference between a dialogue that might have disagreements. We talk to many. We talk to many of young people daily, and the way we break it down to them, they're able to understand it to the point where, if we see them again, they're gonna say, "Oh yeah, we're the Israelites. We have to keep God's commandment." You know how many people we talk to daily? Got, but I want to clarify some things she said because she said she did say we are preaching hate. One thing she might. Un And that's fine. That's fine. But when we deal with the Bible, the Bible is strictly facts and it is what it is regardless of how we feel. That's what we're trying to explain to you. So although you might have we have we might have women that's of white women on our on our maternal sides. That doesn't matter because it's according to the seed of your father. The only reason why we were saying that to determine whether you are an Israelite or not, because everybody's not an Israelite. That's why we use history. That's why we go into the history. Not only that, we do we we go into the archaeological evidence as well because the archaeology supports exactly what we're saying. To the Ten Commandments written in Hebrew that was over here in Mexico. Right. All right. To the pyramids that's built there that the Mayans built. Not Jew. We're going to explain that. Revelation 29. Right. The Jewish people, the white people that you see over there, you know what I'm talking about? Those are not the real Jews. Right. They stole They stole our identity. Their their people came into be us. Because the Bible says the real Jews have dark skin. Christ was, Christ was a Jew, was he not? What what's misleading? You gotta let us know. Now look, we don't do this. For, look, we do this. Revelation chapter two, verse nine. All right, since we just ask that you, we're gonna answer your question and we're gonna give you a flyer, and we're gonna make sure you straight. Read this. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Although we are the lowest state in this society, we still rich in spirit. Right. Read on. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Which what? Which we say, say they are Jews. Jews. You have people right now saying that they're the real Jews in the homeland right now. Right. But there's certain things that would not be taking place if they are the real Jews. Right now it's a war going on. In the Bible, if the real Jews are in their homeland, it would not be war at all. That's right. Read on. And are nuts. And are what? And are not. What did God say? And are not. Read on. But the synagogue of Satan. Those people that's over there, those are the synagogue of Satan. Right. They're pro they trying to be us. Right. They literally took our identity. They're following the commandments that we supposed to be following. Well, we're not, we're not trying to say, hey, do a little bit more research, but your time will not Even though we did our research, sister. Even though it may seem like you're just no, it's no such thing as mixed, no, according no, no, to the Bible. No, 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 no. Yes. The Bible. That, that word is for specific people. But what people is that? So, if you found out that you had somebody white in your family that was called to tell you something, what would you do? Right there. Well, it depends on the maternal or paternal side. Which one? Is it the mom's side? I get it when it comes to activating DNA. DNA. When it comes to your spiritual gifts and all of that. Go on. You can keep up. I mean, can you explain? I mean, it's several things I can explain. It's like the way he's speaking in the mic. She can tell that people will be talking at frequency. 
No, the he has that 58 one. Dolores said we gotta cry out loud. Not like this. That's Are you like sure? Real. Are you sure? Bring it out. Isaiah 58 one. Bring it out. Say it. And burst of a what? Bring it out. Let's read it. It reads, cry aloud. It says what? Cry aloud. Oh, whisper. Cry aloud. You know what? Spare not. Look up thy voice like a trumpet. And show thy people their transgressions. And thou shalt Jacob their sins. So when we come out here, we got to raise our, we got to speak in that type of authority. Because what? The word is with power. We got. We can't just come out here and whisper. We try to get that message according to our people. We hard hit it. So if we out here whisper, you think people gonna listen to us? Uh -uh. Absolutely not. We out here to show our people their sins, where they're going off at, tell them to repent and come back to the most side before they be destroyed. Right. We not we not Christian pastors out here. We not advanced. We are Pacific, we are the servants of the Lord, right. sent by the most high God to do this job. Right. What is the the Bible says the Israelites are hard headed? Right. Give me that in Ezekiel chapter three and two. We are a stiff necked people. Meaning we don't listen. Right. As if, and if God says we are people that stiff neck and hard headed, He said out of the, that means we're stubborn. Mm -hmm. We don't like to take correction. Mm -hmm. We don't like to understand knowledge. Right. We don't like rebuke. Right. We think we know it all. Right. We're prideful. Right. This is why God says the things that He says because He created us. It is. So we uh, it's the, not the so-called black man. The average so-called black man in America, he's not stiff neck. Oh. Oh. Read that. Exodus 32 and 9. And it says, And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. I have what? I, I have, have seen, seen this, this people. people. What did Moses say? I, I have seen, seen this people. You know what? And behold, it is a stiff neck people. It is a what? It, it is, is a stiff neck, neck people. people. Because you would know that our ancestors in the wilderness they didn't listen to God. At many times as God told them not to serve other gods, guess what they still did? Serve other gods. Many times as the most I told the people not to be murmuring, guess what so-called black people do? Complain, murmur, even when they do have everything. Right. And then we we, uh, we mad and unfortunate with the situation we in. But guess what? We ourselves is the ones that got ourselves into the situation. Right. Read on. I got you. Read on. Now it says, verse 10, Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Right, now, you have the definition? The definition of stiff neck in the Hebrew, hard, difficult, intense, stubborn, stiff of neck, rigorous, obstinate. See that? We're an obstinate people, stubborn. This is what God said. I didn't say that. We solely go off the Bible. Right. Thus said the Lord. Isaiah 39. Great strongholds, huh? We out with this is love, sister. We we all we do is we care for you. We just want to save your soul from death. Right. Read this. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9. Read it out. That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Did you know how many people actually stop by and want to hear these words? Nobody. They got better, they got sins to commit. They'd rather go to the club, go smoke weed, go get high. Right, right. Rather than to hear the word of God that's going to actually change their life. Right. Read on. Verse 10. Which say to the seer, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. What do our people want to hear? Speak see unto us smooth things. things. Our people want to hear smooth things. They want to hear that everything is going to be okay. Right. You can do whatever you want to do. God is still going to forgive you. Right. We out here to tell you, you that's not that's not who God is. Right. God is not the God that just you can just do whatever He's still gonna forgive you at the end of the day. Uh -huh. No, God is gonna hold you accountable for what you do. That's right. right. The Lord is not a nice guy, man. Right. The Lord is a man of war. Right. Now, you got any questions? Any, any, I know you wanted to I say something. Said you said who, you said that. What, okay, what about the? Who is your neighbor? Who is neighbor? Let's go to it. And, and we here, and we here to teach you, sister. That's, that's right. That's we, right. We love Bring all. We love you. All we care about you. Right. We're not out here to hurt you. We're not out here to none of that. So y'all got a Yeah, we do do YouTube. What's the YouTube? Uh, WFI Chicago. Leviticus 19 to 17. Leviticus 19 to 17. Bring it out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother and thy heart. Right. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, 
and not suffer sin upon them. It's going to describe who is your neighbor. Read on. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Against who? Against the children of thy people. Who is your neighbor? Against the children of thy people. So your neighbor will be the children of your own people, of your own nation. Right. You have other nations outside of the earth. Asians, you have Japanese, you got a so-called white man, the Arab. These are your table of nations. We are the children. What do you mean? We are the children. Is everybody the children? We are the children. Who is we? Because your neighbor is only the same, the people of your own nation. That's your neighbor. People in China is not our neighbor. You don't feel me. You don't feel me. That's because we're not going off emotions. God said, give me Jeremiah 17 and 9. The Lord said the heart is deceitful above all things. You mean that in Jeremiah 17 and 9. You said the heart is deceitful above all things. We're going to read it. I don't want to say my own words. Jeremiah 17 and 9. Chapter 17 and verse number 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Read that again. The heart is deceitful above all things. Read one. And desperately wicked, who can know it? That's why we don't go off our heart how we feel because it's 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 wicked. That verse right there, I believe that it was based off being unalive. You know what that is? You know because you know That's your interpretation. You know about Google, right? Yes, I know about Google. So in that context, in that situation, they're speaking when you're when you're being unalive, you're in a situation to where basically people are trying to stop you from doing what you're supposed to be doing, right? They're trying to take your destiny and take it from themselves. They're trying to take your energy and keep it from themselves. So in that context, I believe that they were speaking from being unalive. That means that somebody basically put some type of bondage on their heart chakra. That's why they said what they said. Can you read the again? Yes. Give me first Peter 4 and 11. I mean, give me second Peter 1 and 20. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. Look it out. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It says, who can know it? Because what? How you feel is the emotions. God is logical. I want you to do some research on being alive. Because when you're being unalive, you're not in tune with your heart chakra. It's, you're going about chakras and things like that. I, I'm, I'm talking about solely your emotions. And, and no, it's not going to mix what God tells you to do because God gave you certain standards regardless of how you feel. Your emotions don't matter when it comes to God. It's about what the God says and his logic. And after that, it is what it is. It's simple. That would be what? Your interpretation. Absolutely. Exodus 15 and 3. Give me uh, Job chapter 37 and give me verse 23. Yeah. And give me Sirach chapter 43 and give me verse uh, 29. God is manyfold. Read that. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. Bring it out. The Lord is a man of war. It says what? The, the Lord, Lord is, is a man, man of war. war. Read that again. The, the Lord, Lord is a man, man of war. war. So God is not the white Jesus that you see in none of that. We don't, we don't we don't care about that. The Lord is a man of war, and war is what? Bloodshed, massive killings, destruction, evil. You know what? Yahweh is his name. It says what? Yahweh is his name. The Most High's real name is Yahweh, which means he is. Because he has no beginning or he has no end. Right. First Timothy 26. First Timothy. First Timothy 26. Job 37 23. Get out. It's the book of Job, chapter 37, and verse 23. Bring it out. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. It says what? Touching we cannot find, find him out. out. So the most, hey, we really can't find him. He's too powerful. If you was really to behold the majesty and the power of the most, you would, you would die. You would right. faint. Right. You know what? He is excellent in power. He is what? He, he is, is excellent, excellent in power. power. You know what? And in judgment and in plenty of justice, he would not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respecteth not any that are wise of heart. See that? So the Lord don't respect persons. He don't care if you wise. He don't care if you rich or poor. His judgment is still gonna stand. So it's giving you different characteristics about God. All I hear is love your neighbor. We loving our neighbor. We love. I love this brother, man. Right? I love this brother, man. We love our neighbor. But one thing we do, we try to love the other nations instead of loving our own people. Right. 
We need to first start loving our own people first. Right. Before we right. start loving the Asian men and the Arabs and the so-called white men. That's, right. That's not gonna help us first. Mm -hmm. right. We gotta first start loving our people. Stop telling each other first. Right. Like spiritually, you don't understand what some of those texts were about. What what text don't we understand, spiritually? Because we understand, Lord, we can't understand make, all things. I can't make you understand and see something that you don't see because your eyes are not open. Sister, have you read the Bible? Be honest, have you? Yes. You read the whole Bible. We read, we read the whole Bible. Not only that, you can read the Bible, but you have to have the right understanding. How do you know if somebody has the right understanding? Let's show you. Psalms 111 and verse 10. Psalms 111 and 10. The Psalms of the 111. And verse number 10. Bring it out. And it reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It says what? The, the fear, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wait on. A good understanding. A what? A, a good, good understanding. understanding. Only way you're going to get a good understanding of the Bible is what? Have all they that do his commandments. The only way you're going to get a good understanding is if you're keeping God's commandments. Right. If you're not keeping his commandments, God is not going to open up your eyes for Amen. you to understand his Bible. Amen. So I got to ask you now, sister, are you keeping God's commandments? All of them. Honestly. There's some commandments that we're looking at, sister, that you're not keeping right now, which is okay. But the, that's the only way you're going to have the right understanding. Right. First Timothy 2 and 9. It's the book of First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. Get out. In like manner, also, that woman adorn themselves in modest apparel in what in modest apparel it's a commandment in modest apparel so a commandment for our israelite princess women they have to dress in modest apparel right, right. being in a dress now you might have not known that because in america we would you, we not taught that right. at one point in time during the before integration in a feminist movement women never wore pants Right. They never wore booty shorts. Right. They, they never wore any of that. Right. So this is a this is a commandment. You listening? I'm listening. See, we don't want to go there, but we this is all love. I mean, that's, your, that's what you feel like you're entitled to do. It's not what we feel like. It's you, what you we do. You do. It's not what we feel like. I don't feel nothing right now. I feel you. If you used to feel my heart, I don't, I don't feel nothing. I don't, I don't have emotions. We just tell you what the Bible says. Right. Regardless, if, now we might not give it in the best message all the time, but you want to get. What is she talking about? Now? I just feel like some things are misleading. Y'all have a good day. But that's I don't want to walk away, but I don't want to argue with nobody. We're not arguing though. I know. I'm not against you. Wanna, you low key want to stay up here. I do because. That's I God. Know. That's the I spirit. Can't make you understand. I don't know. Satan wants to tell you to go, right. oh, but God is making you stand up here because you could have really been killed off. Right. That's but it's something in your spirit that still want to hear these words because deep down inside you know what we're saying is true. Right. right. It's thus said the Lord. Right. 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 Do you understand what we're saying? Proverbs 20 24. It's the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 20 24. What's she saying about women wearing dresses? She said basically we can freeze out here wearing dresses all year round. I mean, How do, you don't have to freeze. We don't women. Brothers have wives that wear dresses all season around and they've been out freezing. All right. That's what you call an excuse, just being honest. Right. Because right. guess what? It's certain things that God told us as men to do that we can't give an excuse for. Right. I can't have an excuse for me not wearing my beard. Right. It's a commandment by God for me to wear my beard 24-7. Right. We commanded to wear fringes. Everybody right. has fringes on. It don't matter where I'm at, I must have my fringes on. Right. Right. It's commanded for us as men to make sure we taking care of our household. Right. Making sure we teaching our children. Right. Teaching our wives and loving them. Right. There's no excuse all year round why I can't love my wife and love my household. Right. right. But it's just when we bring out certain things, and we're going to be honest, our women in 2023 
have a hard time with taking accountability. Right. That's what we, we must take accountability. God said, do it, do it. Right. You might not agree, you might not like, you might not feel that way. But guess what? If you want to get saved, this is how you get saved. We don't know what the Christian church saying. Right? We don't know what Pastor Porkchop saying. Right. But if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, you must keep God's commandments and have faith on his son. Right. Simple. Bring it out, huh? So, so Grandma said, wearing pants, wearing dresses in Chicago are you crazy? It's too cold. If that's the case, then all the women would be dead because back in the day before the 50s, women were wearing dresses in Chicago. Right. Absolutely. Right. right. Prior to integration. Right. Dance is newly created. This is a new. A lot of these things are new. We're not from inside of the world, sister. You're an Israelite. Okay, but listen. If you actually pay attention to history and the woman wearing dresses, they really suffer. Suffer from what? And studies even show that women were way ten times more happier than they were before than now. <laughs> For real. Our women are depressed now, high anxiety. Right. Because we come from. Hard workers and overworking our bodies, doing things that we really shouldn't even be doing. Who and who wanted to fight for our rights? And our husbands could not come out and fight for our rights. We had to do it ourselves. And who wanted to get those rights? Because prior to integration, women were not working at all. At all, their job was to take care of the household, and they were perfectly right, right. fine with doing that. Right. But guess what? You had a feminist movement, or you had so far black women. They feel like they can do all bad all by themselves. Right. They don't need a man. Right. They're better than a man. Not only that, but you did have a lot of the so-called white men did put drugs and um, guns in the community, set up the prison systems. Their job is to take the black man out of the household. Because you're going off of like race and genetics and stuff. I'm going off facts, facts. and history. That is true, but that's not the whole world didn't just every woman in the world. We're finna do this at the same time. You can't talk about that. You had two feminists. What are you talking about? You had the you're feminist. talking about something that's gonna affect the whole entire world at the exact same time. No, I'm you're talking about something that's state and that's law for everybody. I'm uh, talking about genetics. America. You're talking about that. I'm talking about what's affecting our people. Right. I'm, no, I'm cool. You don't want to hear. I'm listening. But I got to clarify because you might not, I might say something that you might say or you might think I'm talking about. I want to clarify so you can understand what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm listening, sister. Yes, you're saying that we're going specifically off what race is as far as what has happened to our people. feel like I'm going to hell? I can't. There's no such thing. Hell is not real. We living in hell. Right. Right. Hell is not a place on the ground where you burn forever. That's not right. in the Bible. Uh, uh. Hell is a condition. Right. Uh -oh. But I will say, if you're not keeping God's commandments and having faith, you will be destroyed when when America. Your heart, you, you don't feel your heart. You're not in tune with your heart. Who do I love? Yes. Can I show you? First John five and three. Bring it out. <laughs> I love God. Bring it out. I love my people. All right. Bring it out. But love is not emotion. Right. in the Bible, your heart can be referred to as your mind. Right. Because your heart Everything don't have a thought process. Your body is a brain. Your skin is a brain. Your brain is a brain. Yes, it is. That's not scientifically proven. We study Maybe science. It is scientifically proven. We study science. It is scientifically proven. All right, since that you said that, but um, that, that's cool. You might feel like that, but again, it's, love. That's the truth. Love. Okay. You wake up because you have something in your vessel that does not belong to Like what? That's keeping you alive. Like what? So, what like, what's blocking? What's blocking? What's blocking? My eyes is open. My physical and spiritual eyes is open. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be out here right now. All right. My point is, love is not an emotion. I want our people to understand that. Love is an actual word. Let's show you that. First John 5 and 3. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 3. You know. For this is the love of God. It says what? For this is the love of God. 
that we keep his commandments. That we what? That, that we, we keep, keep his, his commandments. commandments. Love is keeping God's commandments. If you're not keeping God's commandments, it's impossible for you to truly love. The world has a misconception about what love is. People think love is an emotion, you're getting butterflies in your stomach, you cheesing. That's not love. Because still through that, you can still betray somebody through uh -huh. all of that. You can still backstab somebody. Right. You can still forsake somebody. Mm -hmm. Love is an action word. So to love God is to what? Keep his commandments. Right. If you're not keeping God's commandments, you don't love him, neither do you don't know him. Right. Let's show you that. First John chapter 2 verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, if we what? If, if we, we keep, keep his commandments, you know what? He that says I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Is a what? Is, is a, a liar. liar. That again? Is, is a, a liar. liar. If you say that you know God and you don't keep his commandments, God said you're a liar. You know what? And the truth is not in him. And the what? And, and the, the truth, truth is not, not in him. him. Again, I didn't write the Bible. Right. I was born in 2003. The Bible was created way before 03. Right. Right. I'm just out here reading what the Bible says and bring and giving out the sense. So, sister, we do you feel like right now if Christ was to return, would you make it? Yes or no? Would you make it? Would you be saved? She said you're saved. What'd you say? Matthew 10 and 22. Matthew 10 We're going to show you how you because a lot of people think they be they saved right now. Nobody's saved. I'm not saved. Although I'm out here doing this, I'm not saved yet. It's things I have to do while I'm still on my earth to make my calling and election short. What am I saved for? I don't even know if I'm going to live till tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. Read on. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 22. Yeah. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. It says what? And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Last time I checked, we not hated by everybody for my name's sake. Will you really start living this Bible? God says you will be hated by everybody. Look at Christ. When Christ was on the earth, he was hated by everybody. Right. His own people, his family, the people of his own nation. Read on. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. It says what? But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. The only way you're going to be saved, you have to endure it to the end. Right. It's things that hasn't even happened on the earth for us to endure yet. Right. World War Three just started happening. Right. We still, we, we haven't seen a famine. The Bible prophesies of a famine. The famine didn't happen yet. It's going to be a time where people are going to be killed for the word of God. That hasn't happened yet. It's coming to the time where the sixth seal is going to be poured out on the earth. That hasn't happened yet. So if that hasn't happened, how are we saved? Right. God is, God hates. Right. Does God, just give me Romans 9 and 13. Bring it out. World war. It's a lot of wars. It's a lot of wars. So you're waiting for a war? You're waiting for death? We're waiting. waiting on death, how you gonna make it? I mean, you... You're supposed to know you already made it. That's no, the trick. That's a good mindset you want to have, but at the end of the day, you don't know. You don't know. Cause did Peter know he was going to deny the Lord? No. He was fully convinced in his mind, Lord, I would never forsake you. Right. But what did Christ tell him? No, you're going to deny me two times before the crock crow. Three times before the crock crow. What did Peter do? Deny his own Lord and Savior. Right. So it don't matter what you, because we, at the end of the day, we're still man. We're still human. We're still flesh. We're imperfect. The Father is the only person that knows all things. Read this. It's the book of Romans.